All right, so this is a quick video about replacing a lower engine wiring harness on a mid-90s SL600. Um, this might apply to V8s as well, but as you know, between 92 and 96, they used a biodegradable wiring harness, and uh, you have to replace it literally all over. Here I replaced the uh, top engine harness already. Um, I replaced the MAF wiring harness. This is actually a new kit that I wired all the way back to the inside of the coffin. And then you also have to do the uh, throttle body wiring. And then the last uh, one that everybody forgets is the uh, lower engine wiring harness. And I'll show you where it connects. Uh, here in front of the coffin we have this kind of strange shaped connector that sits here like this. And it uh, has a plug. And this right here is the basically the main part of the engine, lower engine wiring harness that runs down. Through here, you'll notice that it has these kind of distinct uh, blue donut type things that are holding in various places. It goes down, it actually goes underneath the front uh, exhaust manifold. You can see here, the, here's the air pump. This is the air pump and it snakes kind of through there. It goes around the motor mount and then it comes across the side of the engine and disappears into the uh, passenger side footwell uh, firewall. And I'll show you what it looks like on the inside too. Luckily on the inside, it's actually pretty easy. You're just gonna replace one panel and uh, or remove one panel and you're gonna see exactly where it connects up. It just connects with a giant bolt. But uh, this part of this harness that goes underneath the engine is, is not easy. It has uh, a couple of single wire leads that go off to the oil pressure sender, which is on the other side. And then it has another one goes to the oil pressure or the oil uh, level indicator um, sensor, which is on the passenger side of the engine. The oil pressure is on the driver's side. And uh, it's just held with a series of like Allen bolts all over the place. It's covered in a thick uh, kind of corrugated plastic covering. So it's impossible to get out without removing stuff. You also have one lead that goes to the starter and you can't access the starter from underneath the car really because the solenoid's on the top of the starter and that's what you need to get at and it's basically completely obscured. So my plan is to um, take off this front exhaust manifold. It shouldn't be too hard. I mean, the bolts are very accessible here. There's enough room to access them. There are two bolts down here that, that are, are actually just bolts. They're not studs. And those just drop down. So uh, removing it shouldn't be too hard. There is this weird, I think it's a coolant line that connects to the side of the head here, goes up to the block, the head. I think that's gonna require me to uh, drain all the coolant, which I just bought a you know the expensive coolant for this. I just flushed it, so that's a bummer. And then of course there's this uh, oil dipstick line, which shouldn't be too hard to manipulate. Just remove here and then be you know, gentle with it and kind of like rotate it out of the way or I'll, I'll see what's holding it on down down there. Maybe I can remove that as well. So that's the plan is to get this out of the way. Then underneath it is just going to be all the attachment points. And I'll also have, you know, I'll have to get my hand underneath here because the starter is actually underneath this second exhaust manifold. So I'll have to get my hand underneath there, but hopefully I have enough of a view and access to be able to get at it and then I can take the entire uh, engine harness off. One more thing before you start this project um, it's very easy to see whether or not it's necessary so up here in the uh, upper part of the lower engine wiring harness all I have to do is pull this connector aside and you can see on the smaller leads they're just completely coming apart you see the copper corrosion so that is you know that's really bad this harness carries a lot of power you can see it down here too see the 
the uh, insulation just flaking away. I can just flick it away with my finger. And that's extremely bad. The white and purple wire, which is the, um, goes to the alternator, that is okay. It doesn't have any cracks on it anywhere. It's made of high quality wire. The other ones are the biodegradable. These are the two sensors for your oil pressure and level and then the one for the starter. So that's what's falling apart. And what happens is these will short together, which, you know, they don't carry a lot of amperage. It's just 12 volts with, you know, a few amps or not even, probably way less than an amp, but they get really hot and then they burn the good wire insulation off and then it all it all goes together and this large I'd say it's about a 12 gauge wire for the alternator if that shorts out then this will turn into a fire so that's okay so after a little bit of work um, I realized that uh, I was 100% correct in that uh, there's pretty much no way of getting at this uh, job in terms of uh, replacing the lower engine harness um, without removing this exhaust manifold here. And it came apart fairly easily. Uh, it turns out that this um, line here that I assumed was a some kind of a coolant line, remember it was sitting across here, kind of wraps around the exhaust manifold. This is actually just part of the uh, the air pump system. The air pump sits right in the front here, you know, it has two outlets and it's connected via a series of uh, rubber hoses and goes to this uh, valve here. It actually has two valves and then it connects up to this thing which is bolted to the side of the block right about there and uh, it's an air filter actually. You can see inside here it's Actually, it's just a paper air filter. So this is a good thing to replace. Also, you can see all the rubber hoses in the area just cracked and fell apart. They're ancient. And, uh, yeah, these all need to be replaced. I just took the part numbers directly off of them. And they're, they're not too bad. They're about $10 a piece. I need the three of them. Um, when it comes to the actual exhaust manifold, um, these uh, Lystritz is the name of the company, Lystritz, they're very high quality, very easy to work with. They just have a series of uh, 12 millimeter bolts that hold them on. They're pretty easy to get to. The one on the ends, the far ends here on the bottom were difficult. I had to use a uh, 12 millimeter uni universal and I had to use this kind of crazy... 12 millimeter wrench here, you know, something that can pivot and also ratchet to be able to get at the uh, bolt that was, I think it was this bolt right here, furthest to the edge there on the bottom. But other than that, it was pretty self-explanatory. Had to remove the, uh, the dipstick. I removed another kind of a downpipe, which connects to here. Also fairly easy to get at, just two bolts. Um, had to remove this little heat shield. But uh, all in all, not that that difficult. And this is what you're left with here. You can see down there that little bright spot with the uh, plug, little paper plug. That's where the uh, oil dipstick sits. And then of course, here's the actual wiring harness just dangling here right now and you can also see how by opening this up I've now created a space that I can get to there that uh, uh, I, uh, you can see the starter motor and then the solenoid on top of it hold on let me turn on the light here okay let me just uh, just turned on the light here so you can see how this works. There's the, uh, this is the 
main engine wiring or lower engine wiring harness. It connects to a series of these loops. It has this horrible corrugated black plastic that just breaks. And then there is the top of the solenoid there and where it connects. It has two big connectors there. And uh, I think that's pretty much the, the only way of getting at this, uh, at this job is to do that procedure. All right, I'm gonna continue to pull it out. Okay, so I've uh, completed the job here. What I've done is I've uh, recovered the wire with a fiberglass sheathing that goes all the way to the solenoid. Comes back out, goes through these uh, factory loops, mounting points, and then goes over here to the alternator, and then I've individually covered all the wires that go to, there's a small wire that goes to the alternator, it's the blue one, and then uh, there are two other wires that go to the two oil pressure, oil uh, level sensors. And I might, you know, tidy this up a little bit with some uh, zip ties later on. But I try to use as much of the factory uh, sheathing as I could because it's pretty high quality stuff. This is the, the factory sheathing. And then for the places where it had this stuff, which is a black corrugated plastic, which I'll show you here is, you know, just falls apart. It's just completely petrified. Uh, in the place that it had that, which goes all the way over to the uh, starter solenoid, I've just used that fiberglass stuff, and it looks it looks pretty good. Um, loops back around over here, and I even used a bit of the factory wiring harness sheathing up here, so the identifier is still there. And then uh, just resoldered these pins. It has these nice, infinitely resolderable pin connectors. And then we have those three wires. I didn't have a green wire. I'd use this uh, red and yellow wire. But I got the other colors, I think, correct. And um, now the thing I discovered doing this is that as long as you're... Uh, you're not concerned about the covering of the wire in this area, you might actually be able to do this job without taking the actual exhaust manifold off. I don't see how you could really do it cleanly without uh, taking the air pump system out, but you might be able to get away with not um, doing the, uh, the exhaust manifold if you don't care about the sheathing of the wire. Um, but I cared a lot about that so um, you know I think there's no other way other than taking the front exhaust manifold off here the uh, wire I used uh, here is that it's around 16 gauge and I just used short ends from another project so this is the factory uh, MAF sensor wiring harness that I I did a couple months ago this is also a serious problem these are all biodegradable wires originally. And on the uh, kit that Mercedes sends you, they actually give you a lot of extra wire. So I just took the extra wire from that, which is a really high grade, you know, 200 degree Celsius um, military grade wire, and uh, just used that. So that's a little bit of a trick here if you're looking for some wire. It comes with, it doesn't come with a green wire, but it comes with a blue and a brown wire. And then I just used this red one to substitute for the green wire, which is the wire for the uh, uh, the oil pressure sender. So um, if you're doing your MAF sensor, it's a great, great way to go. It's real Mercedes wire.